What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how you can scale out your LightSign instances using a load balancer on Amazon Web Services. Alright guys, so before we actually jump into setting it up on Amazon, I just want to give a bit of background as to what a load balancer is and what we're actually going to be sort of doing as we go ahead and set this up. So if I pull up this here, basically what a load balancer is, is a sort of manager between uh, traffic uh, or internet traffic and how that traffic gets dispersed or routed to your applications. So having a load balancer over here for say when, you, when you've only got one instance there's no point because you've only got one instance so all the traffic is always going to go to that one instance. If you're following on from a previous video of mine uh, we have two instances but we don't have a load balancer so to actually access those instances we have to go to the specific public IP or domain name for those instances and actually get on that way. But with the load balancer, in theory, what should happen is if anybody goes to our domain, mm -hmm. uh, they'll just get routed to one of our instances that is either less busy or is actually up and running. So if the other one stopped, uh, the load balancer will tell it to go to the other instance or any other instance that's running. Okay guys, so to start off, what I have here now is basically two fresh instances, right? Um, this .o dash copy and this .o dash prd. These are the two instances that I'm going to be using uh, to load balance with. Um, if you've already got two instances running, just use those two or however many you have. But do note, if you have SSL certificates installed on your instances, you may run into a problem if your SSL certificates are redirecting. Um, but otherwise, just feel free to follow along. Okay, so with that out the way, let's actually get into the fun stuff. So. I've got my two instances here, and now what I'm gonna do is actually create the load balancer. So just go to your networking tab, go create load balancer, and I'm just gonna leave it exactly how it is. So I'll leave the name the same, and you can see it says it's gonna be uh, set up with HTTP only at the moment. So we can set it up with HTTPS later, but um, we'll, cover that. we'll cover that as we go. So just go ahead and create your load balancer. And as you can see as well, this is gonna cost uh, 18 US dollars per month. So just be aware of that. All right, so once you get to the next screen, it's gonna ask you which instances you wanna target with this load balancer. So for me, I'm gonna use .oprd, and then I'm gonna attach another one with my .o-copy. So once you've set them up, once you've attached both your instances or however many instances you have, you can see now that it says the traffic will be evenly distributed to the instances that you've attached. So once that's done, we can basically now set up the DNS for our load balancer. So go back to your light cell instances or your light cell dashboard, go to your networking and go to your DNS zone that you might have already set up for your other instances. I've covered how to do this by the way in my um, other videos. So if you're stuck here, just, just go back, check those out and you should be good, good to follow. All right, so from here, uh, basically all I need to do is edit my A record to resolve now to the load balancer. So instead of resolving to a single instance, it's gonna actually resolve to the load balancer, which controls or manages both those instances that I have set up, right? So I'm just gonna get rid of that and click load balancer one. And that is all you really need to do, right? So just tick that off, let that save away. Okay, so now what we have to do is go back to our load balancer and we're gonna to have to set up SSL. Uh, so if I go back to networking here from the dashboard to my load balancer, go to inbound traffic. And you see here it says, this load balancer cannot handle secure traffic without a valid SSL or TLS certificate. Um, so what we're gonna do now is basically just create one. So we can go create certificate and my primary domain is .o.com.au and it auto fills that already. So I'll just go create. So that's gonna request it and now all we're gonna to have to do now is actually verify that we own that domain. So once it gets to this stage here where it's asking us to validate a domain, uh, we need to create some extra CNAME records in our domain zone. So I'm just gonna open this up in a new tab here. Go to networking. Go to our domain, our DNS zone, and then we're gonna actually add a record here. So this is gonna be a CNAME record. 
So the values you're going to want to add is basically this part here that you get from the validation section and then the value. So you're going to want to trim out as well your domain name. So, so for me, what I had to do, I just opened up Notepad and then just got this whole section here. And then I put that into the, the name part here. And then the maps to is going to be the value that's provided here, which you can just copy paste the whole thing. So once your CNAME record's all set up, if you go back to your load balancer, you should see here that it says something like uh, your load balancer or the validation is in progress. Uh, just give it like a couple of minutes. And then if it still hasn't kicked in yet, and you've definitely saved the way your CNAME record, just give it a refresh and you should see it come back to a screen similar to mine just here. So once you're here now, it says the status is valid, but it's not in use. So all we have to do now is just use it basically. So we just go to here, select an SSL TLS or TLS certificate to enable, do the one that we just created. And there we go. And now it says that we have HTTPS uh, enabled. All right, so we're nearly all done. And you might, you might be thinking by now that both our instances are attached and we've enabled SSL or TLS, so we should be able to connect. And you might be able to. Um, but for me, you might have noticed that I have this health check here of failed. And this is due to something in WordPress on my, on my instance that is redirecting in a funny way. Now you might not have this, and it might already say pass. And if that's the case, I think you should be good to go and actually connect to one of your instances. Um, Otherwise, we need to do some roundabout sort of stuff to get the health checking to work properly. So, what I've done is I've just gone down to customize health checking, and what we're going to do is just add this health.html. And what this means is it's going to check this route instead for the health checking, right? So, we add the health.html, and then we're going to go back to our instance and just connect to, say, this one. We're going to have to do this in both, but we'll connect to this one for now. And then once we're here, we're going to go cd slash opt slash bitnami slash apps slash wordpress slash ht docs. And then here, we want to basically create a file called health.html. And we can do that by saying touch health.html, just like that. Cool. All right, I'm going to exit that one, and I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other instance. Okay, so once you've done it on both instances, or however, however many instances you have attached to your load balancer, uh, you should see now that your health checks come back as passed after a couple minutes. So just wait, you know, five minutes after you edit that file, and then give the give this page a refresh, and it should come up like that. So the next thing to do now is to basically test that the the load balancer is actually working, right? And the best way to do that is just to stop one of your instances and make sure that you can still connect to it or connect to your connect to your domain and then to your application. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll just stop one of the instances that we have attached to the load balancer and we'll wait, wait for that to stop. And once that has stopped, I'm going to type in here my domain name and <clears throat> if the load balancer works correctly, we should instead get routed to the other instance that's on the load balancer that's currently running, uh, which is this .o-prd right here. Okay, so now that that's stopped, if I go to the networking tab and go to load balancer, you can actually see here now, the load balancer recognizes that it's stopped, so it's not gonna be sending any anybody to that instance. So if I go here now, .o.com.au, I still get routed to an application or to one of the instances, so, that's a tick for that one. Now all we have to do is turn it back on and then turn the other one off and make sure that we can still connect. And that way we know that if either instance is down and one of them is up, we can still connect to our website or any other application that you're running. So I'll just turn this one back on and I'm gonna actually stop this at the same time. All right, so once they're both, or once the other one is stopped and the other one is back up and running, and then we can confirm it in our load balancer. You can see it here. So because we stopped it, it's actually reattaching it. So we'll just give it a second. I'll see if I can actually reach this if I refresh. Okay, so it's still, it's actually, we can actually still reach it. So this one now is stopped and this one is running. 
and our load balancer has routed the traffic now to the other instance and we can connect so the load balancer works okay cool so that pretty much wraps it all up uh, some final comments I'll make um, in regards to setting this up and a potential error you might be getting uh, if you get in the error where it says uh, error too many redirects after you set this up and your health checks look okay and it says that there's too many redirects and um, the browser doesn't let you get to the application basically what this indicates is you have a rule set up on your web server or your instance that is basically um, likely routing HTTP traffic to to HTTPS because uh, if you go back to the load balancer here you'll see that it says your instances will receive traffic from this load balancer on port 80 which is HTTP so if your instances are set up to route traffic from HTTP to HTTPS you sort of get this infinite loop which keeps that redirecting going on and then the browser crashes saying that you have too many redirects so um, you have to look at your, your rules there as to why it's redirecting. Generally this is set up from SSL certificates or something like a plugin that uh, manages your SSL, so something to be mindful of. Sweet, so I hope you guys learned something today. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing, liking, sharing, comment below what you want to see in the future. Um, I will be posting fairly soon uh, videos on Azure and Google's Firebase, so stay tuned. Thanks.